there's Socon John Hooper at 130. We'll be talking about Mike Young going to Virginia Tech. We'll be talking about who's going to win the NCAA championship tonight between the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Virginia Cavaliers. Virginia's one and a half point favorite. We'll be talking to Joe Panucci at the bottom of the hour quickly. Hey, what's wrong with the Bucks? I just dropped two of three up at VMI. Is it that no one was paying attention to him? VMI has only won eight games this year. Then again, in the conference, they are just below 500. Virginia Tech comes into Johnson City on Wednesday. And so ETSU, with more than 20 victories on the year, have a chance to right the ship against their Virginia opponent. But really, we could talk about Rick Barnes, and we will, possibly going to UCLA. It's a surprise that UCLA, I think, kind of was interested in Barnes. I don't think it's a surprise that Barnes is interested in UCLA. There's still a feeling that the UCLA job is the best in college basketball. I realize it's been a while since they've won a national title. Then again, Tennessee never has. But I think that what we are going to do is talk today. Well, first of all, why Carmen? Why, why this piece of music? Why not the traditional sports thing? 1976, yes, 43 years ago today. Bad News Bears debuted in theaters. There's also one other great baseball movie that's, you see, it's in tune with opening day. How wonderful that is, you know. Remember when opening day wasn't in March? Remember when opening day wasn't 35 degrees? I don't have such a problem with opening day being in March. Believe it or not, yes, I'm a purist. Yes, I'm a traditionalist. But I don't want to be unreceptive to change. I don't want to be, you know, all things are bad. No, let's go back to the typewriter. I mean, no, I don't want to do that. What I do want, however, is for there to be some common sense with the changes. There's nothing wrong with starting the season in March. There is something wrong with playing it in 35-degree weather. So, build more dome stadiums. One unit, don't tear down an existing park just to build a dome stadium. But, you know, they got it wrong in Minnesota with Target Field. I mean, it's Minnesota. Have at least a retractable roof. Come on. And I... Does Bristol need a retractable roof? Well, they could have had one at BMS yesterday, and what would it have meant in terms of attendance? About a thousand more people walk up sales maximum? And a thousand added to nothing is still really not all that good. 26,000. That's my estimate. Now, NASCAR doesn't release their attendance numbers. So therefore, you know, we don't really know. But I'm there, and I'm judging 26,000 in a venue that seats 162. And the way I came up with this is literally by going to section N of the, uh, the Allison section, okay, which is somewhat near uh, the finish line. And I'm going one, two, three, which you could literally do in any section yesterday at Bristol. They didn't even have the wall trip in the Colwicky sections, the ones right uh, at the bank, uh, the end zone, if we were talking about the Battle of Bristol. Those sections, nobody could sit in them. Completely sectioned off. I think you might be able to walk by them, but still. And you could go into some of these sections and say, in fact, in most of the sections, and go one, two, three, four... And halfway up, the this is a 162,000-seat venue, and I'm halfway up Section N in the Allison you know, gates, the Allison sections. And I then said, you know what, maybe, because I want to watch the race. I want to, you know, give our followers on our 1420 WEMB Sports Radio Facebook page the pictures, the commentary, the site that, yes, only I can provide. And so I'm 
looking at the stand, I'm, and I say, you know what, I've counted halfway up this section. Somebody's going to be, you know, relieving themselves in the restroom. Somebody's going to be out buying a concession right now. Somebody will have left early. It was the second stage of the race, or the third stage of the race, excuse me, the final stage. And I just said, okay, 90, I'm going to give him 250 in this section. And I was halfway up. I could have given him 180, but I just said, okay, let me just give him 250. And, you know, it'll add up. So let me go two. And then I counted how many sections they were allowing people into. And I got 52. Now, by that, I will tell you that the way they do they've got, like, say, an Allison, the Allisons, that's the seating in the lower level, and then it's the Allison overhang, it'll protect you from the elements or something. And I'll always be a fan or two that's, you know, they're, they're obscured from my vision. And so I figured, okay, you know what, I'm going to be really charitable here. I'm going to multiply that by 30, by, uh, I'm going to just double it. Because you'll have people in the infield. You'll have people in the suites. You know, you'll have that. And I said, okay, 250, just double it. 500. You're allowing people in 52 sections. 500 by 52, that's 26,000. That's what I think was there. Used to have 162,000. Now they're having 26. Even to myself, I'm saying it couldn't possibly be that small. I'll just throw on then, just for the heck of it, 5,000, 10,000. All right, that's 36,000 people in a 100 baseball. That's a 222 batting average. That's what your good field shortstop me to. And that was what was at BMS yesterday. Remember, I can remember I used to. Performance Radio Network, uh, Performance Racing Network, excuse me, affiliate uh, at another radio station. I used to run the board, and I had to drive to Bristol. And, you know, that was difficult because you'd have to get up real, real early. And you'd litter, and, you know, to where the station was in Bristol that I used to work at. And 10 miles away from the track, there was a traffic jam. Now, you drive right into the track. No problem. What's at any time? Not a problem whatsoever. And that is a real shame because a lot of people missed a fine race. Kyle Bush beat Kurt Bush for the checkered flag. Bryce, only a mother could hate. It brought back those memories in other sports. Peyton Manning against Eli. Or even, like, your baseball fan like me, Joe Necro hitting the only home run of his major league career off of Phil Necro in a 1976 baseball game. By the way, May 29th, 1976, if you're so inclined to know. That sparked the comeback of 4-3 Astros victory against the Braves back when. But I also thought this ratio was a real good argument for the all-time stock car driver. I mean, you know, they want to say, well, he's got more victories than Richard Petty. Admittedly, some of them in the minor leagues, Craftman Series or whatever. But he's got 54 now in the Cup Series, and that puts him in the top 10. Tied for, I guess, now top 11 officially, but ties him for 10th all time with Lee Petty. He'll break it. Lee Petty will be out of the top 10. Think about that. And it wasn't so much with how Bush finished, but how Kyle Bush began. He was the first car to spin out, head to the pits. His car was... And he did it, you know, brilliant strategy, staying on the track during the final caution. He was running a distant third. I was seeing it, and I said, they got a caution here, or else he's not going to have a chance. There was a caution. Husky screwed up trying to get it back on the track. He wins the race. Yeah, the day before, there was a fine Xfinity race. Christopher Bell defeated Tyler Reddick's car, painted all up with Hollywood butterflies, and that's about as East Tennessee as it gets, and we all heard that these races were for the local fan. Dolly didn't even attend the Xfinity race where she was honored, and I just think it's time to ask if Bristol Motor Speedway is the new Mini Dome. I mean, I remember the Mini Dome 
years and all that, beating NC State, Appalachian State, all that. In its heyday Memorial Center, one of the 50 largest arenas for college basketball it filled up. ETSU essentially gave up on the place a decade and a half ago when they failed to keep it up to fire code, thus sectioning off half the capacity. They didn't even say, well, you know what, we need to do these adjustments in the building so you can seat the 12,000. And they said, eh, we'll never sell those. And then when they had a capacity, it felt like a tomb. 6,000 because there are half empty seats there. They didn't rip the seats out. Finally, five years ago, ETSU abandoned the mini dome to play at an even older venue on a high school campus. Folks in it, it's filled. Now, I can argue with BMS. Hey, if it wasn't for these attendance struggles, do you think that the powers that be would have said, hey, we've got to keep our reputation up at BMS? Would they have a football game there? I'd talk about the Winter Classic. I'd love to see that. Would they have moved the race to the playoffs if Bristol didn't need the help? I don't know if Bristol would ever lose a race. Not with the power of Speedway Motorsports has. But BMS is enormous. It's likely too big. So keep an eye on how the doubleheader works in the post. Because, you know, I could actually see if it's successful. That might be good to fill Bristol again. And yes, I've heard they, you know, well, you know, they bought up Nashville. Maybe that'll be, uh, uh, you know, a venue or so that they, they'll move a race to. I mean, it's possible. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but I especially think now that NASCAR seems to want to get more big market, you know, they're out of New Hampshire, out of Darlington. Who would have thought once upon a time they'd go out of Darlington for a race? But the biggest. I've said this before, I'll say it again. 30 years ago, Las Vegas and the Vegas was 90, Tri Cities was 92 in terms of TV markets. Now Vegas is 39, Tri Cities is 102. It's not talked about much, but it should be. And of course, when they get a little smaller, that's when they take the race away. Haven't happened to uh, Martinsville yet, you know. Uh, we'll see, though. Fine race last night, just not a lot of people there.